five minutes later. And here, with his bird's eye view and a brain to match, is Mr. Know-it-all. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this broadcast. I'm Thomas Fester, my friends, and this is Disclosure Tonight. How about that? Quick start for the show tonight. Let's go ahead and have some fun. I want to go ahead and welcome everybody in. Yeah, the audience is still building, but let's have some fun. Let's go ahead and figure out who in the audience is there. Welcome to Disclosure Tonight, everybody. Something we usually do at the start of every broadcast is we welcome in our audience. On that note. Let's go ahead and see who we have out there. Start with the drums, Thomas. Here we go. All right, who do we have out there? Let's go ahead and take a look and see in our chat. It's building right now. Let's see who's out there. We have Brian Morgan's here along with Chameleon UK. Chris B is here along with Christine Lee Lynn. D Wolf made it in along with Distant Dark Ice. Eli McGinnis present, my friend. Thank you for coming in. Firefly is here. Along with Idaho Strong, J Cats here, along with Kathy, Kelly Broad, and her piercing blue eyes. Good to see you, Kelly. Kim and Ari's around, along with Corky. Welcome, Corky. You're new to the show. Matthew Nissau's around, along with Matt Dumrell. Good to see you, Matt. Uh, Neil Carr's around, along with the Paul Demon. Welcome, Paul. Good to see you, my friend. Resonates here, along with Rick Roberts. How you doing, Rick? Rough Freddy's around along with the Shelly Montgomery. Good to see you, Shelly. Thanks for stopping in the chat last night. Who else we have out there? We have Tia Loreno, who's in the chat, and she's also in the back. Good to see you, Tia. TK's here along with Trent. All good. Yes, everything's all good tonight. And uh, True Seeker's here along with one of our friends from the back who's at work. We'll see you on Saturday. Maybe tomorrow night. You never know. As the old Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy, coming to us live from the United Kingdom. On that note, it's that time of the night, friends, to go ahead and welcome in our audience, our back panel. Let's go ahead and see who's there. Well, uh, we could say he's far, but I think he's near, but he's neither. He's Neil. Let's go ahead and welcome in Neil Carr. Welcome, Neil. How you doing? You got me a mouthful of uh, goldfish there, Tom. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, everybody. Yeah, it's good to see you, my friend. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, also Thank in the you. back, we've got our friend all the way from Sweden. Lo and behold, Ali Alvian. Good to see you, Ali. How you doing? Yeah, good to see you all. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very, very fine, and I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Thank you for coming in, my friend. Absolutely. Is my camera off? No, my camera should be on. Oh, you're not seeing the back, are you? Oh, shit. Oh, no, they just told me. Video. Oh, no. Oh. My chat screwed up when I restarted OBS. <laughs> we'll fix the chat in a second once I get the show up and going. Also in the back, who else we have there? Would you look at that? Someone told me at least. Reality Check, also known as Hollywood Herald. How's it going, Harold? Uh, it's going better here than there, it looks like. Oh, yeah, I'll get it fixed when we're watching the video. Don't worry. I'll I'll do what I have to do, do my magic eventually. We'll make it happen. And also in the back, would you look at that? Someone we haven't seen in a couple days. It starts with a B, ends with an N. There's an I in there somewhere. Welcome, Brian Pemble. How you doing? Hey, good evening. Better late than never. Uh, just been sick the last couple days, and we're all good here. Good, good, uh, great to see you back, my friend. Absolutely. And also, someone coming in from Australia. You could say it's none of your business, but it's, honestly, it's our own Susan Ford. Welcome, Susan. How you doing? I'm doing really well, Thomas. I'm out and about. Just dropped some paintings off to be sold. So, yay. Yay, revenue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just spent 11 grand over the weekend. Ugh. Hurts. What the, what did you buy? Uh, window shutters. A window shades, you know, yeah. The, the 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 metal ones that go on the outside. Shutters, yeah. Yeah, 
Are they the ones that help you if they roll down? Do they roll down and stuff and protect you from a hurricane? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Those are those are good ones. Yeah, expensive too. Yeah. <laughs> or they help keep your or they help keep your date from escaping. <laughs> well, they good. I mean, they make your room really dark and they keep the heat in and keep the cooling and you know, the, so they you know, and they also keep the people for inside from getting out. And the outside from getting in. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Thank you for coming in tonight. None yet wouldn't be the You're same welcome. without you. Also in the back, we've got Sonic Oman. Welcome, Sonic. How you doing tonight? Doing all right. I'm just going to be lazy and lurk in the back here tonight. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Well, thanks for coming in. Also, coming to us all the way from the great state of New York, it's our very own Tia Maria Lorena. Welcome, Tia. How you doing? Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Excited for the show. Love the beanie. Love the beanie look. Thanks. I um, my hair was crazy. Yeah, oh yeah. When I first got on. <laughs> yeah. So that's what happens when it's short, you know. We know about crazy hair here. Trust me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, you know what? Hold on. Start virtual camera. Oh, now you can see me in the back. There we go. Yeah, you were gone. <laughs> I just had to click a button, not restart the whole thing. Now it works. How about that? Well, thank Good. you for coming in and helping me to see the button right in front of my eyes. It's one of those things <laughs> that unless you look, you're not going to see it. That's right. <laughs> I am far from perfect. I'm a human. Dumb human. Not go. good. Not as smart as a non-human intelligence. And I will never say that I am. Yeah. Well, you never know. You yeah. know, if they're here to take souls, right? Well, yeah. If, if we're if we're tasty, you never yeah. know. They're good to the last drop. You know, it's a cookbook. You know how all that <laughs> stuff goes. Well, we've got one person in the back I haven't welcomed in yet that I need to welcome in. Start. Uh oh. Try to turn off the power strip. I know you probably can. Let's see if Nick is going to be there. How you doing, Nick? We're doing toss. <laughs> Good to see you, Nick. I always call you at the most inopportune time. But wait a minute, wait a minute. I got one poor person that I missed. Because I'm going to get cussed out if I don't. It's Ms. Cuss Out. How's it going, Ms. Cuss Out? It's going great. How are you, Thomas? Oh, no. Nah. See you, see, so, so. Come oh, see, okay. come sa. I'm C. Kamsa. It's Muy two for bien. Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Tequila Tuesday. Well, you got to have some fun with it. But thank you for coming out tonight, Ms. Kassad. I'd appreciate you being here. And that takes us back to, well, I think we did forget one person. We got everybody else, but it's our very own Mike, Mike, Mike Disclosure. How's it going, Mike? <laughs> Oh, it's going. It's uh, another interesting Tuesday tonight, Thomas. We'll see what we have in store for the audience, and yeah. um, it should be fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's a fun time ahead of us for all of us. Trust me, I am trembling <laughs> with excitement on all the stuff we get to talk about tonight. Now, something that's interesting that came to my attention earlier today, I've got a couple links here. Where did I put it? Before we get to the top story of today, I've got a bunch of little tidbits along the way. Where in the hell is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Well, apparently someone shared the coordinates in Antarctica of something that looks like a UFO. Not that it is a UFO, but it could be a UFO. You know how we saw that picture from the like 1956 or so of a UFO that was taken over, uh, taking a picture of, I think it was over Africa or something. It was something that was archived in the bowels of the federal government and it, actually no sorry national geographic national geographic took the pictures and they locked it away when they saw it and that just came out about six months ago this looks like we have a flying saucer going over africa what i'll do is i'll show it to you and then i'll zoom in on it and we'll take a look at it let's get into this ready to see this one mike yeah i can't wait all right wait here we go this. i've got to take that big board and i need to put it on a bit of an angle Better. Here we go. All right. So what are we looking at here? Yes, we are on Google Maps. Good old, good old Google Maps. And I can't zoom in anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and just take a, a, a snapshot of this picture. And let's bring it up and see what we have to take a look here. What we're kind of looking at is something that looks like 
a silver flying saucer, doesn't it, Mike? Or some sort of a dome. A dome or something that's there that isn't there before, but kind of looks like, you know, it kind of looks like that same UFO that was shot from from the plane from National Geographic, just like this was shot from a plane probably or a satellite. Now, one thing I want to point out is if you look off to the side of this, would you look at that? That is a UFO-shaped shadow. At least it looks like it, right, Mike? Yes, no. But one of the things I want to bring in and show everybody, if I go ahead and bring in a close-up shot of some rifts that are there and look at the shadows, look at the angle of what we're seeing, everything that we're seeing for perspective-wise is going, especially the shadows, it's moving in a downward left manner. Meaning if I were doing a drop shadow, it would be down and to the left right? Now, if we're looking at where the UFO is and where the shadow is, the UFO image shape is over here, and this is up and to the left a little bit. So are we potentially looking, is that potentially the UFO from the shadow, uh, a shadow from the UFO? No. Is this a UFO? It sure as heck looks like one. It's something we're going to have to dig into as we move on. But, you know, um, I think we need more info. But you know what? I haven't done this in a while. People say I should do more surveys. So is the is uh, okay. Is the Antarctic unknown a UFO? Let's go ahead and do a quick survey on this one. All right, here we go. Simple one. Let's go ahead and start up that music right now for our audience. If you you haven't been around long, you know, every so often on Disclosure Tonight, we do a survey, and usually we don't do enough of them. So let's go ahead and bring this one one up, and let's see what our audience says. Take this over here, bring up the text a little bit. And the question is, is the Antarctic unknown? A UFO. Bring that back around here. Bring that back around there. Bring that here. What do you th- what do you think, audience? So far, right now, fifty six percent of our audience is saying yes. It's a 50-50 split. What do you think, Mike? Could this be a UFO? Yes or no? What's your gut? Uh, I'm divided. It could be, but then again, we like you said, we need more data. So uh, I'm on the fence, Thomas. So you're. So- I should have done yes, no, maybe. Yeah, I would have gone with the maybe, for sure. Right, 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 right. All right, Tia, what do you think? Convince us. Sorry, I didn't even hear anything that you were talking about. Okay, Susan. I was arguing with my wife. Sorry. <laughs> well, you two argue, I'll let you be. Susan Ford, if you've been watching, what do you think? Is this a UFO or not? Ollie, what do you think? Anyone in the back? <laughs> yeah, well, I got burned on the on the video from South America with a with a creature. I I, I estimated that it was eighty five percent, probably two. Okay, uh, but yeah, but to be this time I say I made um, a a cavity here and said that maybe we have to check the technique where where and when and with what technique to work. So it, what we need to do is go into Google Earth on our next show, bring it up, and use the Wayback Machine to go back in time and check it out. So that's a maybe yeah. as well. Not a yes, yeah, so not I'm, a no. Yeah, so I'm defensive here. I don't think it's real. Okay, it's there good. you go. It's not enough. It could be. It could be. Yeah. All right. With 63 votes in, let's see if we can get up to uh, 70. Hey, Google, give me 15 more seconds on the timer. I like it, Thomas. I, I think it's a rather... Uh, nice looking uh, specimen there yeah absolutely yeah. thank you neil okay google give me 10 seconds on a timer got it 10 all right here we go with 69 votes in 69 dudes <laughs> there you go all right here we go with one second left hey we made 70 we made 70 votes let's go ahead and take a picture of that for posterity oh we got 72 votes came in right before we ended the poll 
better than stroking it. All right, here we go. So our audience wound up. 57% of our audience said yes. It is. Is, is it a UFO? 43%. It's almost a 50-50 split with a little bit more leading towards it. So thank you, audience. I appreciate your your insight into that one. It's something that we will always continue to go to our audience for these kind of things. Because a lot of times it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what you think. Neil? What, what could it be if it's not a UFO? Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to go ahead and check that pan part of Antarctica. Because the thing is, if you look around the coast of Antarctica, and that... Oh, okay. Now I'm getting the better perspective of what's going on. Oh, no. So that's off the coast going onto the coast. All oh, right. So going thing. around the coast, there's nothing else, anything like that. And that's one of the things that I'll do when I'm looking at anomalies on the ocean floor. I will go and scour hundreds of thousands of miles of the ocean floor to go and find stuff. So. You know, is it a UFO? Well, it, it's kind of looking like it because there's nothing that I'm seeing around the shore of Antarctica right now that looks anything close to it. On that note, we did get a super chat in. Let me go ahead and bring this down and let's see who that came from. Oh, I didn't even have the auto chat on. Holy cow, let's bring that up right now. Let me turn off that wonderful pulsating logo. All right, tonight's about Nolan to Coldhard. Quote, I'm leaving open the idea. Or it's actually Nolan to Coldheart. I'm leaving open the idea that some form of consciousness that is non-material. If you see if you've seen things, I've seen you've only come to the same, you'd only come to the same conclusion. Which Gary Nolan has said he's say, seen things in the past. What those things are, time will tell. Time will tell, absolutely. All right, where are we going to next? Uh, yes, Tia? Um, so I've been watching um, and taking notice that uh, a lot of them have been saying that they think that the plasma balls might be conscious. Now they think that they're they're like some type of life. D did you know that? I did not know that. An interesting thing to say the least. Now, one of the things that uh, someone who was a first-hand observer, a first-hand witness to seeing a UFO coming up out of the water by a temple in Hawaii where there's a deep well, it came out as an orb. But on, on the inside of the orb, he was very close to it, probably within 100 feet or so. He saw a saucer. So. Our saucers, they can change shape. Yep. No, no, they don't change shape. There was a saucer inside the orb. That's what they saw. That's what Ted Rose saw. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It oh, could be consciousness. Well, it could be something else. Something's, in, something's inside the craft, correct? Some something's inside the craft that's inside yeah. of the orb sphere going around with it. And one of the things that uh, makes kind of sense. There's different colors to these orbs and the color that we're getting from these particular orbs that are out there is depending on the ionization that that particular energy field that's there is emitting a type of energy, but depending on the frequency of the energy, it's going and exciting electrons mm -hmm. in our atmosphere that give it the color that we see. Oh, yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. Interesting. I think, I think Brian's got something on this, Brian. Yeah. So, so that's my belief as well, Thomas. And they're able to change and adjust that frequency, which in turn creates that gravitational field that bends the light around it that can create different uh, colors. Um, so I think that that's right, too. Now, I just want to play both sides of the fence. If we look at the Chris Bledsoe story, um, he's claimed that, that the orbs come right up to them and the beings kind of evolve out of the orbs um, yeah. and uh, uh, that would lend credence to the, the uh, theory that the orbs are uh, are a conscious being in and of themselves yeah. or the beings can immediately you know switch into something else yeah. you know it, it could be two different things too it could be that there's multiple yeah. species could be multiple yeah it could also be like a, a way that they're coming from like when they say different dimensions 
like wouldn't that be a way that they're able to to travel through well again it would be that if they have a here's the thing gravitational wave fields that would go uh, go around a craft right would yeah. allow it to move not inside of our atmosphere but through it where reality wraps around it now the source of that object could be something from under the ocean it could be something from another dimension it could be something from across the galaxy we're not sure exactly where they all come from you know who else is really um uh, if somebody's interested in um really taking a dive into the orb um it's just now getting started in this field um is the dorothy um dorothy uh is that or yeah dorothy is that dead <laughs> She is dead, but there is a um Oh yeah, we played we played the videos of hers on here in the historically in the past. We've played the yeah, her, exotic some, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, she's got some amazing, amazing stuff on there. And scientists oh, yeah. have looked and it's like the kind of camera that she uses. It was an eight, it, it was else. a super eight video cam it was a super eight film camera back in the day, and the stuff that she recorded could not be faked. Oh, what, what do nope. we think about Billy Meyer? Total fake. Oh my God! Mm. Oh yeah. Okay, so we've got we ha do have a news clip with Chris Bloodsoe, who just jumped by Fox News recently. But before we get that, you know, Skyfire News don't want to follow him, but they did actually have here one of my favorite orb videos, and this is from an orb I think up in Alberta, Canada. If Michael Sunkloff was here, we could talk about that. I don't think he's from. Alberta, but it, oh my God, the commentary is just priceless. Let's go ahead and play this one before we play this next uh, news clip. Here we go. Let's play it. Let me get this down a little bit more. This will work. Here we go. Every morning, man, you don't believe me. I'm glad you're here today to see it for yourself. That's a UFO, buddy. Or that's an orb. And if that orb is around, Bigfoot is around. Because he sure, follows, the, no, he follows the Bigfoot spot. Honest to God. Researchers have proved it, bro. That's wild, wherever the fuck it is. It's hiding behind the fucking fog, see? He doesn't think we can see it. And that's not Venus, because Venus would remain stationary. This thing's cruising across the morning sky. That's weird, eh? Huh? I'm glad you see it for yourself, because if you would have showed up, I would have told you about Look, it. The light's disappearing, it's going out. Yeah. Cause, it's, Cause we're videotaping. Look, that light just came on. Look, see that dude? Yeah, I did. That light just popped on down there. That's cool. Look, it looks like it's going into a circle spin or something. It's beautiful, though, isn't it? That's fun. It is. It's beautiful, eh? Told you, you don't there. fucking believe me. I told me. you I told so. You, you don't fucking glad believe you see me. It for yourself. Yeah, they they do see. Orbs UFO, up in buddy. Or and this is probably one of my favorite orb videos. And glad that I've got it down here again. I'm gonna have to tag it. And I've got one of these that's a higher resolution, but I'm not sure quite where that one is. Now, on that note, we also have a video clip here of Chris Bledsoe uh discusses UFO sightings, believe it or not, on all places with Jesse Waters on Fox News. Oh, saying, Hey man, I can summon an orb. Here we go. Let's play this clip. Well, we heard from an expert. Now let's talk to a witness. Christopher Bledsoe says he's not only seen UFOs, but he can summon them on command. It started when Bledsoe went on a fishing trip in 2007. He says he saw an orb that followed him home. And he still sees the orbs above his house to this day. He's become something of a psychological phenomenon, his experience is so compelling that both NASA and the CIA have studied his brain. Even the History Channel's documenting it. They filmed him IDing an orb live. Watch. He's pointing now. So maybe he's focusing on one. That would make sense. He has one. He's got one in the tree line. When we started seeing that intense effort, he spotted an orb in the tree line. Let's turn it over to Christopher Bledsoe, who personally witnessed UFOs. So, Chris, the CIA studying you, NASA studying you, the History Channel studying you. Tell Jesse Waters prime time. Lou Elizondo has been there, supposedly, and 
so has Colonel John Alexander. You know, if Alexander goes there, there's a there there because that guy doesn't leave his place in Summerlin, Las Vegas for anything. Here we go. I'm the truth. You can summon alien orbs. Well, um, it's, it's, it's been happening for the last 15 years. And, uh, I, you know, I ask them to come and they come. And that's, I don't know why, but they do. And we've, we've, I've taken 2,500 videos in the last 24 months, like you're seeing there. How do you ask them? I just simply said prayer. That's all I do. And, uh, and they come. And do you crazy think, as do you as crazy think, as it's time, that's how it happens. Do you think there might be something wrong with you? No, I don't think so. I think the government's trying to figure out why this this is happening. They have been for quite some time. How did it start? Well, it started in 2007. I had um, I was down on my luck. I had lost basically everything. After the World Trade Center disaster, I had 100 houses, 130 houses a year I was building. I had 70 under construction. And... Fort Bragg is where I live in that area, and they stopped buying houses. And uh, with uh, interest rates at eight and nine percent on construction money, then it was flying out the window so fast. I just watched it uh, in a slow motion train wreck, and it mm. got so that I couldn't even buy my children lunch at school after being successful for twenty years. So you were down on your luck. Yep. And um, so I was on the Cape Fear River with three other guys and my son, and they were fishing. I just took them there. I was contemplating um, everything. I was just, you know, I was thinking the worst thoughts, and I was crying out to, to the heavens, whoever's up there, I need help. And that's when I walked around the corner and up to the top of the hill, and these three big balls of fire was sitting about 300 yards away. And the next thing I know, I walked back to the fire, and it was close to four hours later. And there had been a manhunt for me, and I had no clue that any more than 20 minutes had passed. Unbelievable. All right. Well, listen, I hope these things are peaceful because you were summoning them all over the place. And yeah. uh, <laughs> they look like they're lighting up the sky. God bless you. And just tell them um, I come in peace. Thank you very much. <laughs> you. Thank you, Jess. Yeah. There you go. Someone else who's been seeing orbs for a long period of time and going ahead and talking about it. Yeah, he's had a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I, we just hope everything that Chris has been bringing forward is the truth. It's nothing that we can go ahead and sign on the dotted line. But there's a lot of awful proof out, good out proof out there that he is doing something interesting, to say the least, to call these things around. Now let me go ahead and get back to the chat and get ready for our next story coming up. Uh, well, there's been a lot of talk about the things we're seeing in the sky. Brian, actually, Brian, you have your hand up. Go ahead, my friend. Hey, I'm sorry, Thomas. Just before you get to that, um, I've been trying to do a lot of study to that Chris Bledsoe story. And, you know, once again, there is some evidence with the video of the orbs, but I uh, it's a it, it's a worthy story when anybody gets a chance to listen to it. Um, I do believe what the guy's saying, and I think that a lot of government people did too. So, yeah, the number of people would not be showing up at his door to check this stuff out if it wasn't real. Now, one of the things that I believe Lou Elizondo had said, one of the things you want to do as you're walking through there. If you don't want to get underneath the spell of the non-human intelligence, and there was a group of people walking across the property. Uh, when some of the people were walking through the property, or one person that I'm aware of who was singing a song in their head as they're walking through it, when everybody else got to the end of the path, they all had missing time except for the one person who was singing a song to themselves in their mind. And that one person is the was the guide was saying, look over there, there's a non there's an alien behind next to that tree. No one else remembered seeing that, but the person who said it and the exactly person who was right, singing Thomas, a song yeah. in their head, right, Mike? Go ahead, Mike. 
Yeah, no, I, I didn't raise my hand. Tia has her hand raised up. Oh, sorry, I thought you said something there. No, it wasn't me. It was Brian. But that's Go ahead, okay. Brian. Yeah, you were saying something? Yeah, just real quick before uh, before Atia goes. Yeah, he and he learned that from a NASA guy when 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 he was heading into a pretty a secretive part of NASA that there he passed this black glass building he couldn't see inside. And the guy said, "All right, you got to start singing a song in your head." He said, "Why is that?" Well, he said, "Because they can read your thoughts." And and he thought that was the weirdest thing. He never knew what was in that building, and so that's where he learned to sing a song. And 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 I've tried to ask Rick, you know, has anybody, you know, ever been able to defend against this stuff? And that's the only thing that I've heard of um, that you can do to prevent that mind takeover, if you will. I had heard that same story about something that was going on in Bledsoe's. Yes. That's absolutely correct. That's who was going into NASA. They actually brought the Bledsoe's in, or, or, or excuse me, just Chris himself, into this NASA place, and they told him to sing a song. And then, yeah, j just like you were saying, he was walking on a on a path, and he's the last one in line singing a song. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Tia, you have your hand up, my dear lady. There's a video with pictures, too, of a being stepping out of the orb. I mean, he was huge. Oh wow! And and there, um, there's a a video of the this weird tree that just like caught on fire. That's not dead now. Um, and it's growing leaves. It's still alive. Is this you the one in Bledsoe's where it was actually burning on the inside of the tree or something? I've seen that. Yeah, one it was yeah. absolutely gorgeous yeah um seeing it but you could see it if you will i mean and i know that you could probably make you see anything at any time with your, your mind i get it but you could see things in in it in the in the in the fire yeah it was just it's absolutely amazing to me that is just wow thank you very uh, very much for sharing that t i appreciate the, all all the things you bring forward here uh, also in the back we've got reality check with your hand up my friend yeah, when you uh, talked about that uh, tune in your head thing, that reminded me of a Star Trek The Next Generation episode where Deanna Troy kept hearing that tune in her head over and over again. It was driving her crazy. Um, I don't remember that episode? one. I'll have to start rewatching Next Generation after we finish off. Yeah, it was, it was by uh, an advanced guy. He was the last of his race and stuff, and he could do anything. He was supposed to be omnipotent or something, I guess, and he was yeah. the last of, his, last of his species. So, okay. Yeah. Being omnipotent is being better than being omnipotent. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All Good right. One. Let's move on. Well, the next thing we're talking about orbs, we're talking about aliens. Could aliens potentially be demons? And if we look back at a lot of the work, a lot of the old documents out there, could aliens being confused from de for demons in the old day Let's go ahead and take a look at the list of the c c comparison between uh, alien abduction accounts and satanic ritual abuse survivor accounts. Oh, my God. What are we talking about here? I know. Hopefully the UFO. <laughs> just saying that. Yes, we're going to get in trouble from the UFO, the UFO Twitter. Uh, actually, the UFO YouTube censors on this one. But let's compare examination table with a white sheet. How about just an examination table and freaking stainless to an altar table with a white sheet? Okay. How about X X rays, headgear and wires, uh, et cetera, polygraph and shockers? Maybe that's a stretch. Surgical ne needles, implant instruments, anal probes to dives, naggers, pins and needles. But where's the probes? Yeah, not okay. New space writing symbols makes sense too. Old esoteric writing symbols. Yeah, it makes kind of that. That go, goes along with it. Circular and triangular em, emblems. The pentagrams and triangles. Yeah, there's nothing that passes up a good triangle. I'm seeing too much of this so far is not aligning. Let's go on a couple more. Focus on eyes. Scary and calming from alien abductions. Focus on eyes. Scary and demonic. They're not calming. They put you into this state of bliss where freaking care one more bright light as initiating event or bright light as torture and intimidation yes but there's something that comes before the bright light 
And it's that waking up. It's that sudden change in pressure. A sudden gust of wind that comes out of nowhere. And of course, no sound. All right. So we're close. We're not too close. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to go ahead and take some of this stuff and bring it out and see where it goes on that note. What do we have going on next? Let me go ahead and take a lick of my list. Well, um, believe it or not, Believe it or not, we've got a video clip here coming from George Knapp on News 8 out of Las Vegas talking about the history of UFOs. Let's go ahead and watch this clip, shall we? Here we go. Where's that at? Uh, Desktop video. All right. Let's play this one. Here we go, folks. Back in late July, a career intelligence officer testified to a congressional committee about a sensational cover-up. The witness claimed to have evidence of UFO crashes and of programs designed to exploit that technology. Stories about crashed saucers and cover-ups have been around since the end of World War II, but are now being taken seriously in Washington. 8 News Now Chief Investigative Reporter George Knapp reviews now the origins of these claims. When former intelligence officer David Grush testified last July about non-human craft hidden away for decades inside special access programs, it caught some members of Congress and major media off guard. But the lore of crash saucers and dead aliens is hardly new. The claims have leaked out many times in the past 76 years. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. This happened on July 8th, 1947. The granddaddy of crash saucer tales is Roswell. The story didn't emanate with UFO nuts. It came from the U.S. military. In 1947, Roswell was home to the world's only atomic bomber wing. That summer, a long stretch of strange debris was discovered on a ranch outside of town. The U.S. Army Air Force issued a news release that made headlines. The Army had recovered a crashed disc. 24 hours later, the Army retracted its claim and said it was merely a weather balloon. Mangled bits of flimsy debris were shown to reporters. But 42 years ago, this is where it all began. In 1989, our first visit to Roswell, we found the retired Army officer who wrote both releases. He called and said words to this effect. We've got pieces of what we think is a flying saucer. Walter Hott stuck to the official story until the day he died, but left a sworn posthumous statement admitting he'd been ordered to lie, that the recovered craft had been of alien origin, and that small bodies of the pilots had also been recovered by the Army. There you go, Mike. It's another one of those after-death accounts that people are willing to leave if they're going to pass away. No, you're right. That's a very good point. Uh, the problem is these people, when they wait to the very end, it makes it less credible. They, if they were going to come forward, they should have done it and provided evidence to substantiate the claims. The problem is most people will listen to something like that and just chalk it up to yet another story. Yeah, but I think part of it, it though, Mike, comes out of the threat that's put against them that if they let this stuff out, that they're going to, that member or their family are going to pay the price. But maybe when someone's going to pass away, they're figuring, well, I can't get in trouble now because I'm dead. Yeah, no, you you make a good point. That, that could be the case as well. I'm just saying you got to play devil's advocate. There's two ways to look at it. And most people will take either side. So, no, you you make a very good point. That, that could be the case as well. It's Thank interesting. You, Mike. Absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's continue on. The story has been backed up by dozens of other witnesses. The U.S. military has changed tunes multiple times in the decades since, later saying the object recovered wasn't a mere weather balloon, but a highly classified spy balloon, and the bodies were mannequins dropped years later. The Air Force declared the case closed in the 1990s, but it hasn't gone away. Roswell wasn't the earliest crash tale. Famed astrophysicist Dr. Jacques Vallée, who worked as a consultant to the Air Force Project Blue Book, told us in 2021 that the very first atomic blast, the Trinity test, caused the crash of a five-ton avocado-shaped spacecraft. It didn't blow up into pieces the way an airplane would have. It was apparently very strong. 
the tower was bent, but the object kept going. It came to the ground, and it plowed an avenue all the way down the hill. They made a turn, apparently under power, and stopped against a, a, a bump in the, the, the terrain. Nick, you have your hand up, my friend? Uh, yes. Um, he's mentioning the, the uh, Trinity side. Uh, like many people are saying that that might have not happened at all, actually. Yeah. That's always a possibility, isn't it? It's always a possibility, one way or the other. I agree, Thomas. Yeah. And it's one of the things we're all always going to have to take into consideration as we're looking under anything. Let's continue on with this. The kids saw that. Um, now, remember, this was 1945, August 1945, two years before Roswell. There was no concept of flying saucers. Intelligence officer David Grush told Congress there might have been an even earlier crash in Mussolini-era Italy. The strange materials recovered were reportedly stashed inside the Vatican. Nevada's connection to alleged UFO crash retrievals was merely whispered for decades until the late 80s when a former government scientist unleashed explosive allegations about a string of secret hangars built into the side of a mountain near the mysterious Area 51 Base. Well, there's several, uh, actually nine uh, flying saucers, Sorry, flying that, discs. Everybody. The Go identity on. of the witness. Rewind a little bit. Then an accident. UFO crash retrievals was merely whispered for decades until the late 80s when a former government scientist unleashed explosive allegations about a string of secret hangars built into the side of a mountain near the mysterious Area 51 base. Well, there's several. Uh, Actually, nine uh, flying saucers, flying discs. The identity of the witness was later revealed in our reports. Bob Lazar's claims remain controversial to this day, but the allegations are now permanently etched into the minds of the public. George Knapp, 8 News Now. Yeah, Mike, it always seems to go back to Custodial Area 51. It goes back yeah. to the conversation of Roswell time and time again, doesn't it? It does. But yeah. Jean Ballet seems to also make it a point about Trinity. Yeah, that's true. There's always a lot of conversation about Trinity. But again, it may have things have gone on on Trinity, but Roswell is also there. There, and the only podcast that Lou Elizondo talked on, where someone asked him and said, "Hey, Lou, Roswell, in your personal opinion, did it happen?" And his answer was yes, absolutely. On that note, I've got a video clip here that's coming from a uh, Roswell video edit from Eyes on Cinema. This is another video clip that I haven't seen. It's the widow and daughter of Pappy Henderson describing Pappy's involvement in flying the Roswell UFO wreckage and ET bodies to Wright Field, better known as Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. It's interesting how Pappy's daughter, Catherine Grudz, says that Pappy described the Roswell extra biological entities as humano humanoid, human-esque looking for that matter. Let me go ahead. Let's go ahead and bring up the old classic television set for this one. Here we go. Let's play this clip of uh, oh, we're, uh, the widow of Oliver Pappy Henderson talking. Here we go. The widow of decorated World War II pilot Oliver Wendell Pappy Henderson says he also told her about seeing the bodies of aliens at the base. Well, here we go. Let's listen to this. And that during this time were those crashes of the UFOs in the desert or out of town of Rockwell. And uh, he never said a thing about them because uh, he, he had a top secret clearance had anything having to do with dropping atomic bombs, you had to have the, the highest uh, clearance. So he uh, it witnessed this crash and the little people who were there, I don't know just where he saw them. So I never did pin him down. I, I don't know why I didn't. It was so shocking to me that something like this was real that uh, I never did. How did he happen to tell you that he'd been involved with 
seeing the little bodies of the, cr the crash flying saucer. We were at the grocery store and uh, we were going to check out our groceries and uh, there were newspapers at the stands, as there always are, and here were these news was this newspaper and he said, well, I guess now that uh, they're putting in the paper, I can tell you about this. I wanted to tell you for years. He said, I want you to read this article because it's a true story. And I not only know that it's true, but I'm the pilot who flew the wreckage of the UFO to Dayton, Ohio. You mentioned that earlier that he had seen the bodies, and one of them was damaged in some way. I think he told me that they uh, were small, they had large heads for their size, and that the material that their suits were made of was different to anything, you know, it was a strange kind of material. What I remember him telling me was that they were small people. She wasn't the pilot. Pappy Henderson told her this, so she's recounting Pappy. Here we go. And this, I believe, is the uh, Cath uh, Catherine Good, who is the granddaughter. Um, I don't remember three feet high, but cer certainly shorter than we were, small people, uh, pale, um, slightly slanted eyes, large, you know, sort of larger heads, and um, humanoid looking, human-esque looking, but not like us, different from us. And uh, he said they were dead and that um, he had seen them and that he had flown the wreckage of his flying saucer. There you go. Interesting video clip. It's always good to look back on time at the history of this because, you know, our government's been covering this up since before 1947, right, Mike? Well, like Rush was talking about back in Magenta, Italy in 33, there was a recovered uh, crash vehicle that went to the Vatican, like they just pointed out. But then afterwards, Rush also said that he can't talk publicly yet but it goes much further back than that. And we were talking on the show, if you remember, a, a couple of times that the U.S. government still has documents that are classified from the Civil War in 1865. Yes, right, absolutely. Go figure. Everyone from that time is long dead. There's no real excuse or justification to something remaining classified at this point. And it seems that anything dealing with the non-human intelligence, UFOs, call them USOs, under the water, is completely classified. They're not releasing anything about any of the sightings that are being seen underwater. They're not, really, uh, re uh, if you want to call it, releasing any information about from any of the people who have seen it. It's all classified in the first and only true UFO hearing we had because the last one we had was a freaking joke uh, from Arl, that is, uh, with Kirkpatrick in spring of last year. Um, when they brought up anything with regards to USOs, they said, no, we can't talk about this here. We have to talk about that in the classified briefing. And unfortunately, we haven't heard anything about USOs since. Harold? Yeah, I'm just wondering, um, according to the story there by uh, Kevin Day, a helicopter came on there and, and took all the data away. Did he say it was the Air Force? And if it was, why was the Air Force taking stuff from the Navy? It was people in black camos, not black camos, but black fatigues, coming from a black helicopter. There wasn't any indication of which branch of the military they were from. No. All right. I, I've heard it was the Air Force, but okay. Yeah, we've heard it's been things. the Air Force as well, and that's just been a lot of supposition on who it could be. But the ones who actually had the material, had the gear to see everything from the, uh, if you want to call it, um, ground level or ocean level up beyond the distance of the moon. The only ones who had that was literally the Air Force. So the only ones who could have been aware of what was going on at that time was the Air Force. So did they know what's going on? Probably. Did they try to cover it up? Absolutely. Are, are they still trying to cover this up? More than you will ever believe.
Does that make sense, Brian? Not Brian. Uh, Hollywood? We we just got a couple super yeah. chats in. Yeah, oh, we did, yeah. Darko. All and right, we got two well. super chats coming in. All right, one from Johnny Darko, which I was about just to bring up. Let me go ahead and do this. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that. Let me go ahead and grab this and play it. All right, we got some more super chats coming in. One coming from Johnny Darko. Johnny says, get up here. Unfortunately, it's all hearsay until we have actual physical evidence, even if we know it to be true. Well, the thing is, Johnny, you're, that's the truth. We do need evidence. We do need facts to come out. Because otherwise, all it is is a bunch of talk, and there's no real answers for anything besides some words from people where if they lied, they would be fined tens of thousands of dollars, and their ass would be thrown into prison. Where the only wor- things we're hearing f- people uh, from are from people whose, um, if you want to call it, what they have said, the testimony they have given is deemed highly credible and urgent. So while we're not getting the facts coming out, what we do have, Johnny Darko, is we do have evidence. We do have physical evidence for that matter. We've got that under analysis by uh, Gary Nolan and others to where we're dealing with metamaterials. Metamaterials whose, uh, you know, basically they're put together at an atomic level. It's beyond material science, what anything we can do for humans. And if we wanted to uh, recreate what we found, it's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars over 10 years. And all we're going to get is a millimeter by a millimeter inch square of what this stuff is. So, yeah, and this stuff was the entire outer hull of a ship. Tia? Um, NASA also got stuff. Um, I don't know if Lou told you, but from uh, Chris Bletso, when some of them orbs would would come down and they would literally drop plasma. And um, they don't know it's got different properties than what normal plasma has. I have not heard that one, but it's something I'll look into, Tia. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. All right. Coming in another super chat that came in right around the same time as Johnny Darko. We got another one coming in from Faze Will Epic Show. Love you, bud. Love you back. Faze Will, thank you for that wonderful super chat. Hope you're enjoying some of the snow up in Big Bear in the uh, L.A. area. We appreciate your love and support for everything Disclosure tonight. Thank you again, sir. Let's have to play the music one more time, and let's get back to the regular show and see where we're at. All right, I knew I was just getting something else ready to bring up. What I was going to bring up, I don't remember at this point. <laughs> That's one of those days. It's been a great show so far, eh, Mike? Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, it's, yeah. it's been fun, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Except, yeah, I'm just trying to break up some petty squabbling going on in the uh, front chat. Oh, no, what's going uh, on? Chameleon UK, who's a regular on the show, is making a question about Bob Lazar and the statement that um, Rick had mentioned that he was a custodial engineer when he was working in 51 and Resonate and King Bob um, said that um, Chameleon is a troll because he said that without proof, he's not going to take Rick's word for it. And then they're going back and forth and doing petty squabbling. So. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Yes, we all we we all love stories, don't we, Mike? Oh yeah, and we gossip. all love speculation. We all love insights from people. But honestly, folks, you all need to take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. That's for a reason why when I start the show on disclosure tonight, I show this disclaimer. The views expressed by viewer Colin and or guests do not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Remember, the views and opinions expressed by viewer Colin and or guests do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of Disclosure Tonight's host or any of its related entities. And here is the truth, folks. You need to take that all as a grain of salt for your own rule. You can hear stuff from me. You can hear stuff from Mike. 
You can hear stuff for a brush. But the biggest thing you need to do is you have to be your own. Oh, a bullshit artist. Yes, you have to be your own bullshit artist. It means you have to consider the source. You have to have your own litmus bar of what is believable or what is not believable. And sometimes when you hear something, you have to look at it and say, We ain't found shit. You have to just let it go. You can't take anything and eat it like you're at the Unlimited Lou Buffet. No. You need to take it point. for what it's worth. Right, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, look, we're all adults here. We can agree to disagree. And <laughs> instead of petty squabbling. We're adults who like to, to squabble. Yes, sometimes. But that's okay because... Um, the truth is it's about having an open conversation yeah. and people can have different opinions, yeah. but there's no reason to go back and forth with that. Yeah. Uh, you so, can say the truth is out there, but that account's been canceled on Twitter. <laughs> it has. Elon took good care of it. Oh, my God. So, Juan, we warned you. We warned you, my friend. You go ahead and you say enough things to an, about enough people you're not just going to get banned. You're going to get thrown in jail. You can't do that. Ah, boy, some people, some people, Mike, will never yes. learn. Will, will no, they? no, you're right. They have a, a pretty thick skull. So yeah. they learn the hard way then. That's just how life is. Yeah. You could go the easy way or the hard way. Your choice. They will sing the song of their own doom and be happy about it. Yeah, let's turn that off. All right, and all right, let's get yes, to the next. Sir, no, sir, has a question. He wants to know: Is Sawan banned for good? Uh, sir, are you asking? On, no on... one is banned for good. We're not that evil. <laughs> hey, even Lee showed back up on your live stream on your freaking Twitter space the other day. <laughs> You well, never know. He popped in as a guest. He popped in as a guest. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he, he left pretty quickly after that. Oh, a good half an hour, an hour. That's okay. <laughs> well, we had a lot of people coming in, so it was everyone took turns chatting. But that's oh, okay. of course, of course. You know, you never know where life is going to go. Is all I can say. I have a pretty good idea. Yeah, and I'll say, you never know where life will go. Life is too short. On that note, we've got another video clip coming up, and this is the title we've talked about. Yes, believe it or not, we talked about this one earlier today. Gary Nolan, besides his face being really too red and uh, white point being totally off, James Fox, whoever your camera wan was, boy, promo. Uh, anyway, Gary Nolan has some very choice words to say about Neil Tyson DeGrasse. Are you surprised, Mike? Um, yeah, actually, a, a little bit. Yeah. Didn't because expect Gary, that from Gary. Didn't expect no. it from Gary. No, he's not like that. No. It almost seemed like it was scripted, believe it or not, my opinion. Well, maybe he knew what the question was going to be. Let's jump and let's play this little clip here of... Gary Nolan talking with James Fox. And this is a clip from the new documentary that James is working his ass off to get out as soon as he can. Here, let's play this. The Neil deGrasse Tysons of the world. Mm -hmm. He is a very public figure. He is considered mainstream scientific community. A lot of people respect and listen to what he says. I don't think he should be respected because I don't think he's acting in the best uh, interest of science. I think. Wow. He doesn't think he should be respected because he's not working in the best respects of science. I can see that because he is more of a doubter in chief than anything. He's more of a skeptic than he is a scientist, but scientists are allowed to be skeptics. He's broken his oath of science. He's broken his oath of science. You know what this makes it sound like, Mike? Like they're making... A religion. Could be, or it sounds like petty squabbling, like we just dealt it with sounds, But they're talking about, he broke his oath to science. 
because he questioned that he needs no we're, no we haven't heard that part we haven't heard that part yet come on <laughs> let's listen of science and that you know frankly if there were a tribunal of uh, could you take away somebody's phd neil degrasse tyson's phd should be removed when's the last time he's been so neil degrasse tyson's degree should be removed wow this sounds like the beginning of a wrestling match you know something that was scripted to get both parties adversarial against each other but i gotta tell you as much as we followed gary over the years he's never come across like that type of an individual not with anyone no but i have to say if it's a sumo wrestling match neil may have a <laughs> may come out on top on that one. Oh, without a doubt yeah but there's just something fishy about this whole clip yeah. well we got another super chat coming in go figure great chat family and great show thank you very much and thank you for everyone who's in the chat who's making this conversation what it is. Thank you, TK. Appreciate that wonderful, loving support from you, my friend. Let's go ahead and continue on. Here we go. Invited to give a, a science talk. When's the last experiment he's published? Never. He hasn't. Why is anyone listening to him? Don't ask me. He bloviates. Bloviates. Wow. Long-winded. Goes on and on with no little or no substance. Does a scientist need, need to do experiments to be a scientist? No. No? They don't. Do they need to publish papers? Peer-reviewed no. papers to be a scientist? No. Nope. No. Neil, your hand is up, my friend. Yeah, uh, so he's right. He's right about Neil deGrasse Tyson, but you're right too. Where are you on this uh, matter, Thomas? Are you on the fence? Or I mean, I like Neil deGrasse Tyson, but he he's not doing science any justice because he's content prior to investigation. He doesn't seem like he put a lot more energy into actually like looking into things instead of I mean, of yeah, here's some, you read some of the papers that come out from Avi Lube and what he says, and you say, my God, what the hell is this guy doing? What is he talking about? How can he say that what we're dealing with on this planet are, is the result of something like an interstellar object like Oumuamua coming or Mama Mama flying past our planet, farting out? probes as it flies by that parachute into our surface and that's what we're dealing with here this is the same paper that questioned the ability of the tic tacs to be going from uh 60, feet down to 50 feet in a fraction of a second moving at more than fifty-seven thousand miles per hour saying it's impossible because there should be a, where's the boom? There should be a great kaboom from the sonic, and they should be, these objects should or must be en enveloped as a fireball because they're moving yeah, through he's our looking atmosphere. At everything through, through, through physics as, as we understand them limited in a limited way. Um, I, I don't know why he's not willing to open the stretches, you know, put his, uh, yeah. increase his boundaries a little bit in terms of what do you think is yeah. possible. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting that uh, Gary, I mean, Gary Nolan, can, he's got nothing to lose. He's got yeah. everything to gain. Um, he doesn't care if he loses anything because he still has everything after that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, I hear you. I hear you. Maybe, maybe this will wake Neil up a little bit to uh, do something different. Yeah. Who knows? I It'll be you. interesting to see. Oh, absolutely. Now, I'm going to get to something a little gross here, but I think it's kind of cool because we're talking about the whole thing, the non-human intelligence and what we're kind of dealing with. And one of the things that people have said is that what we're dealing with here for What we're dealing with here for the non-human intelligence, 
They compare us to ants on an ant farm and looking down. In humans, we can't see the stuff around us because we can't see. We're like the fish in the fish tank, right? I've got a better scenario, a better way to look at this. Let's say, you know, if, if you all look at your skin right now, all of you do it, and you get out a high power microscope, and you look at, the, look at a little square part of your skin, everybody is going to have skin mites running around on the, your flesh. They burrow into your skin. They do all your stuff, and they're just there. They're a part of it, right? But humans are kind of like skin mites, meaning we're on a human. We, we can see kind of what's going on around us, but do we know? We can kind of tell there's other planets in the area, other life forms you can get to. There's disasters that happen like showers for these guys or being rubbed off with a towel and everything else, cataclysms that happen on a regular basis. But the reality of it is, if we're at this scale and we want to look beyond it, we have no idea what's in the local city. We have no idea what's in our country. We have no idea what's on our world. All we can see and know is this little patch of space that we live on. We can see beyond it. So in a way, when we're talking about the non-human intelligence, something that's coming in, looking at us, doing stuff with us, imagine it. like It's like the electron microscope coming in, looking at these things, and then we've got the tools coming down to deal with these little things that are running all, all around us. So we may not be essentially a skin mite, but it does kind of relate to how this all works. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> You're yeah, muted. it does. Yeah, it, it does. But I, I, I agree with, um, with Mr. Nolan on this with um, DeGrasse Tyson because he, he's from uh, uh, the the place of ridicule and, you know, let's try to embarrass this person. But he's not in the the game he's got no skin in the game except for what his you know his little circuit circle says who don't practice science anymore right like i could go to school and be a teacher but when i retire i'm no longer practicing my profession so you know like mike he's it was a cop but he retired so he no longer you know is a cop He's right. a retired cop. So he, Neil deGrasse Tyson is giving out false false information because he's not learning anything new. He's still with the old, the old way of ridicule, ridicule, ridicule. And he doesn't want to learn anything else. You know, he says that there is no data. Bullshit. We know there's data. Um he doesn't want to learn and and i mean he's been called out by some really smart people there has been times where mr nolan has said any time that you want to talk to me we can sit down and i will show you what i got he's refused to do it and we all know that that, that mr nolan is data is a data guy so you know that's where i'm at with it um i know i see some people in the chat um that think that you know, it's all, I don't know, it's hearsay, but it's not hearsay. These people have spent their life and their money, by the way, their money to to study this topic. And we've come a long way in the last 10 years. So a lot of the things that people say, they're just talking out of their ass. They're not really trying to find out what this science means now and where we are today, especially with our technology. Yeah, so good, good point. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Tia. S uh, Susan, you have your hand up. None of your business. I apologize for not answering you early. Sorry, I was I was driving, but I just want to say that you know, as far as um, what's his name, Tyson Negro Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, that's it, Neil deGrasse Tyson. As far as He's concerned there must be real money in debunking because he won't give it up. Yeah. It's the same reason. Well, there is a market for debunkers. and But the thing is, 
Neil deGrasse Tyson is on the TV interview circuit. So when things come up, they're like, who can we call on this? Oh, let's bring Neil, and he's great to work with. He's there because he's friendly, he's jolly, he talks about the stuff. He takes a little bit of a twist when he talks about it, and apparently people like to hear what he says. So at least the producers on the shows like to hear. So he's going to keep on saying whatever he says. Again, you just have to take words like this when people are saying it and just let it go in, in one ear and out the other. But he's someone we're going to hear. We're going to hear Tyson. We're going to hear um, Kirkpatrick. We're going to hear Mick West. We're going to hear all these schmucks time and time again. You just have to sometimes understand where they're at. And the problem is, the problem is, is major media will go to these people and one person brings them out. Then another one echoes it and two more echo it and they tell two friends and so on and so on and so on. So what happens is you get Tyson to come out for one little piece and that one little piece has now gone and infected 10, 20, 40 different publications, digital or not, around the world because of that one little piece of information they bring out. That's the danger that's out there. Once their words get into the echo chamber, it just continues everywhere. Ali? Yeah, there's a lot of questions there. I would, I would uh, like to comment. But I think uh, the first thing when it comes to Mr. Uh, Grass Tyson, uh, he, he uh, you, as you said, there's a lot of data, but he, he doesn't recognize data as data. Uh, that's his. Uh, that's a big mistake. Yeah. And I'm thinking about uh, talking to you, Mike. Disclosure as an investigator. I'm thinking about the cases that we have with eyewitnesses uh, seeing UFOs, and they seeing these UFOs uh, dropping, uh, burning. Uh, which turns out to be kind of a molten a molten material, and we've had uh, sightings like this of molten metal up in Wisconsin that's uh, f- uh, come out of the UFO and embedded itself in the trunk of a tree that was actually just retrieved a couple of years ago. So yeah, there's a lot of different sites of sometimes when we don't know why that we're seeing these UFOs putting this ejectile out. No, but I think as an investigator, if I heard the witnesses and how they recovered, uh, Gary Nolan is talking about uh, this uh, mixture of the metallic ashes, uh, like 15 pounds of it. Mm-hmm. And there is other, uh, I think it's a very uh, fantastic story told about the uh, now grown up lady about how uh, were abused by her stepfather and sent out of the house. And uh, on the bench that she should, uh, what, uh, used to in that situation, uh, uh, get down to the uh, to the road just beside it, and there is a, a lamp as well. Yeah. Just outside that lamp on the fields on the other side of the road, very close, the UFO uh, let this metal ashes uh, down. Yeah. Hey, Mike, can you run this for a minute, please? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Ali. Continue, my friends. Thanks. Yeah. And those circumstances, first the eyes witness telling that they see the UFO. They say say that they see they they drop something. And when you go to the place where they uh, supposed to have dropped it, they they find the ashes as well. That is a very, uh, I think, from an investigator's point of view, Mike, is very, uh, very uh, trustful witness. And the combination of the the physical object in uh, in form of this melted, um, uh, smashed um, ashes, and the sighting. So what are the odds if you go out anywhere to find this kind of metal ashes anywhere if you don't get the guidance by seeing a UFO first dropping it? I think that's very compelling evidence. 
Well, in my opinion, Ali, um, what you have is eyewitness testimony. And then with the molten metal that was recovered, you have physical evidence that corroborates the claims of the witness. So it's interesting. You're right. But Dr. Gary Nolan had received some of that molten metal material that you're describing, and he did the analysis of it that showed it was magnesium and um, bismuth that was on a microscopic scale, uh, scale as how they manufactured it, which that's beyond our uh, material skills and scientists do. Um, but in itself, inconclusive, because the materials, the actual elements, can be found here on Earth. It's just that we don't possess the technology to create and fashion those materials in the, the manner that was obviously done with what was recovered. Um, so that that's so it's on one hand, you have information that corroborates itself, but on the other hand, it's still inconclusive. Does that make sense to you, Ali? Oh, yes, oh, yes. If I could uh, add to that, Ali, really quick before you get into this, remember, Ali, that Lou Elizondo in the past has said, we know how this stuff works, but what we, well, not maybe not all of it, we know how some of this stuff works, but we lack the material science to reproduce any of it. Yeah, That's and we the do. Problem. And, and Gary Nolan, he, he didn't even have a clue you know, on, or an idea why to mix these um, materials, little metals with each other. What was the purpose uh, for us, from our knowledge? Why it put it? Sense. Why put these materials down in atomic layers? Why layer between different layers of of metal? Why? Are, but more importantly. Not just that. Why are the metals not made out of elements? Why are they made out of, what is it again, uh, isotopes? That's a way that we do not make metals on this planet. We make it with, with, with elements. And here we're dealing with metals that have a divot, different atomic structure because they're made with elements. And more importantly, the material from what we've understood has been built and put together in zero gravity. Yeah, Means well, we need well, to have a factory, we need to have a smelter in space that can yeah, lay well, down materials on an atomic level. No, but, <laughs> but I think we are um, mixing up two different um, uh, materials here. Uh, one is how the uh, the... Uh, the the features that you uh, uh, talking about, Tom, as well yeah. as well as you, Mike, disclosure. But I think that was from the craft outside some a, a beach in uh, South in uh, South America, where the no, uh, the, the, the this is multiple yeah. materials that has been found. It's not just one. There's multiple ones that are in this way, and pr even the uh, even the ejectits that we found that have come from. I believe the craft, like you're talking about pouring out molten metal, it actually came down on a boat and on a tree in Wisconsin yeah, yeah. back in, was it the 50s, 60s, 60s or 70s, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, as, as you say, that we have at least three of these cases with Countless. molten metal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's very, very interesting. And I think if, if it were a trial, if we... Uh, were to decide whether there are UFOs as well, uh, with these eyewitnesses and the physical evidence, I think would, uh, the jury would go with uh, a guilty verdict <laughs> to say, yes, there, there are UFOs. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I'm, it, I'm right there with you, my friend. Yeah. Because I see no other way to explain this because it's a some exotic material. Yeah. It's actually only found in the uh, with the collaboration of of eyewitnesses. Yeah. Now I've got a story here coming to us from April nineteenth, nineteen fifty, from a newspaper. Let me see if I can bring it up here all over on this side. It's coming from Los Alamo, uh, uh, from the Urban Daily Citizen. 
the Urban Daily Citizen. It's a uh, newspaper. Let's see if I can bring up the whole homepage here. Oh, it's not going to allow me to do that. All right. I'll bring it up here so you guys can go ahead and see it so you know I'm not uh, I'm not joshing you on this one. Uh, let me bring this over here so we're not going to get to it. I'll get to you in one second, Tia. Hold on. I just want you to see where this is coming from. We got a, a, a newspaper article, again, from 1950. Where's it at? Desktop document. Here we go. Urban Daily Citizen coming from Urbana, Ohio. On Wednesday, April 19th, 1950. I think everybody can go ahead and see that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the headline here. What, what is the headline saying? Again, 1950, four years after Roswell. The article says, Los Alamos, New Mexico, April 19th. Reports of pancake-shaped pancake -shaped unidentified flying objects over the government's atomic research center at Los Alamos may pose an embarrassing problem for the military. The government has officially denied that flying saucers exist, but unidentified aircraft are not permitted to fly in the air over the super-secret New Mexico installation. So if observers were correct, and if the saucers reappear close to Los Alamos, security officials may not have to send up planes to chase away the objects they say don't exist. So there you go. Another article going back, you know, going back to 1950, April 19th, talking about flying saucers being seen. And this stuff is not made up. We all know it. Uh, JRD just said nothing changes. Yeah, it's like Groundhog Day, JRD. Absolutely. It's the same thing again and again and again. Tia, you have your hand up, my friend. I was just listening to uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. It's uh, 2091 uh, with Diana Walsh, Pasquella, yeah, or something Pasolta, like that. Yeah. Um, so she was taken to a crash site, um, and they were there for hours, and they actually found found this type of material that that they know came from this craft. Yeah. Um, they ha blindfolded her so that she could, didn't know where she was going. And I know that this all sounds like crazy and spooky, but we're talking about, you know, she's, she has nothing to, to lose. She's not, you know, she studies religion. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the, there is, they don't know what it is. It's a real crash site. So somebody yeah. um, that's looking into that in the chat, maybe you guys should uh, go over and take a listen to that. Um, it's uh, 2091 is the, the number. Yeah, for it's, it. it's the latest Joe, one of the latest Joe, Joe Rogan podcasts. I went to go ahead and watch this on Sunday, to try and get some content to come across. And honestly, I got for the first 35 minutes of the two hours and it's like i was recording it and the first 35 minutes was drier than toast yeah. so yeah. i just kind of said okay let's get past it while well, a bunch of people out there have recorded and gotten into it apparently i i was not far enough into the two into the two hours to get to that magic amount uh brian and just, oh go ahead, sorry Tia. it just it, it gives it gives credit to you know these orbs there's so much information on them coming out yep there's got to be something to them so oh, of course you know. there is there's something to the orbs there's something to the tic tacs to the flying saucers to the cigar shaped craft that we see to all the different stuff there's there's something there's much about something it's something to do with the orbs that we see some people see flying around their homes. There's something mm. about these entities that people are dealing with. There's this thing called consciousness that modern science that Gary Nolan is so hell bent on won't even acknowledge exists, mm. but it's, it, it's part of the science of the woo, I guess you call right. it, but it's more of the science of the who meaning Who's inside here? You know what I mean? That's Tia? right. Absolutely. You know, they've talked Absolutely. about heaven on earth forever. That's I true. agree with it. 
they're all around yeah. us. And it's not Absolutely. just the dead people that are around us. There's other things that are around us as well. Yeah, we like that, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Brian, you have your hand up, my friend. Yeah, and Thomas, this is a kudos to your YouTube chat. I think it was yesterday when I was sick. I was in there with people. Uh, I mean, just amazing chat. Um, but one thing that was in that one that I that, that I found interesting was that they did go to New Mexico, heard Gary Nolan and this infamous Tyler character to look for meta materials, and they found meta materials going back to that meta material conversation that we just had. And she's not under an NDA, and she made that very clear. But Gary Nolan, we believe, is. And that's kind of what no, you're alluding to. No, Gary there, Nolan has admitted he's under NDA. Correct. But exactly the thing right. is, we have to ask how many NDAs is he under? Is he under NDAs from the federal government? Is he under NDAs from media organizations? Is he under NDAs from military contractors? Who is he underneath the NDAs with? And if he could disclose that to us tonight, <laughs> um, we would have an idea of how much information that Gary Nolan has that's forcibly locked up by the federal government versus being forcibly locked up by other entities besides the government that's all that's also Brian causing another layer of anti-disclosure meaning that there's all this additional information we could bring out but we can't bring it out because of NDAs Exactly right and so when you look at who's on the Soul Foundation board you've got Nolan Galladay, you know, you've got a few of these people, Basalco's on there. How many of them now have been infiltrated, like you said, by government or media organizations that are under NDAs? And and, and I know it's not up there that, 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 yes, I believe Gary Nolan too, um, but that he may not be able to reveal some details. Diana Basalka, from what she said, is under no NDAs. So how, uh, how infiltrated is the Soul Foundation? about halfway. Um, so I think that's an interesting question we need to ask ourselves going forward when we're dealing with the Soul Foundation. Hey, why don't we have these tapes released, et cetera, et cetera, of uh, the Soul Foundation conference? Um, so we're going to have to take everything they're going to have to say now with a grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you completely. I hear you completely. I'm going to show a little video clip here that kind of puts us as far as where we're at with potentially dealing with a non-human intelligence, how we see stuff, how we react to it. Oh my God, did you just see that? Is that real? When they may be pulling the wool over, uh, over our eyes, right? So let me go ahead and play this little clip here. It's a monkey. It's a monkey being um, completely amazed by a magic trick. But well, look how the monkey is amazing. Like, oh my God, did you see that? Holy cow, this is crazy. But this is how humans deal with stuff when they see a UFO. So let's go ahead and bring this one up. It's just, it's a cute clip. I think you get, you'll get it. Brian, let me bring it up for us to go and look at. I look forward to seeing what you think about this. Let's get this desktop video. Oh, I uh, probably document a little bit more. Here we go. Let's play this. Raúl viene a ver esto. Es magia. Se tapa la cara y corre. Vuelve a hacer, vuelve a hacer, vuelve a hacer. You see how the monkey is acting with that? He he's in disbelief seeing it disappeared and then he just gets all upset and walks away <laughs> like he's it not certainly m makes me think that we're the monkeys and that bingo could be laughing at us in our zoo yeah yeah I, it, yeah i mean it is <gasps> kind of funny i don't know i'm just uh i'm very anti-zoo and stuff so i'm, I'm anti-zoo as well you know. but if technically if we're living in a zoo and these Correct. things are playing around with us, showing us something, and then taking it away. And humans are going, oh, my God, look what's going on. And they're freaking out in disbelief, and they run away. But more importantly, 
the next time they see it, they turn into a Mick West. <laughs> so, so how long does it take the monkey to learn the trick? Well, let's see if the monkey can actually learn the trick, but it's just, you know, I just see that and I just have to go ahead and, you know, yeah, yeah, firefly, monkey business. <laughs> but do you see how that kind of relates to what we're dealing with? We have to look at other earthlings on the planet because I hate to say it. While we may have some non-human intelligence to make us who we are, because if you look at all the life forms on this planet, Brian, the only one that really doesn't belong is humans. You have to ask that question. Why? Correct. So that is a little odd. Did did, did is that human going to crash in that cage at some point, and then the monkey's going to learn the trick and learn everything else and get advanced, or is the human going to throw that little piece over there and they got to learn it themselves as a donation? Right. Or are they going to pick up a little piece of one of the leaves behind them and do the same trick back? Yeah, and 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 learn how to use his own his own technology. Yeah, it's a good point. Lou is asking Rick questions now. Is it the real Lou Elizondo? No, it's the Lou Buffet. Oh, Lou Buffet is asking. Okay. Um. Well. Oh God, yeah. We were we were expecting Rick to show up here today, but he's not. And I need to go ahead and find this really quick. Who's I? Uh, uh convo with Rick Doty. He 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 may pop in at the end, but. I'd have to research that, but well, Rick seems to be all. I, I guess my last question would be in that um, environment. What's your with Lou Buffet? We could join and back Rick up. Oh no no and... no! You could if you wanted to. I I need to go ahead and find this really quick. I need to get into here and find the link to that. Uh, copy here. So can I preface this for everybody real quick? I, there was a large discussion of whether or not Lou. nobody likes Lou Buffet in that one. Oh, you think? So there was a large uh, 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 talk about whether to let him in or not. And, it, you know, it, it wasn't is anybody on this show. Him? Is he disrespecting him? Um, is he disrespecting him? Um, I think the questions just happened to you. I do, I do not know. Yeah, I, I don't think you should be in, in there alone. Hopefully, we can do two things at once here. Well, let's let's go ahead and put the every night. But uh, can you guys hear I, it now? I show up uh, yeah, now and then. I, I like. Yeah, let's listen to this. Uh, I like Thomas. I like uh, uh, Mike. Uh, hey, they're talking about are, us now. You know, people that uh, do ask me the straight. I mean, same questions I get all the time. Paul Benowitz and. And I, 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 I try to set people straight and what the, what the truth is out there and what the fallacy is. And, and there's so much, Fucking Lou Buffet. so many things that are, are false about the Paul Benowitz case. Or uh, like you said, I, I pay, I'm a paid disinformation. You know what? I challenge you to find one document in the, in, in the United States government that talks about disinformation. There's an entity. It's all deceptive. Well, when I say disinformation, I don't think I don't think. Uh, let me just clear some up. But when I say that, I don't mean like some, you know, rogue agency is paying you to put bad information out there. But when you were working for the OSI, your job was to confuse people with counterintelligence. Correct. Well, that's not my. That wasn't my main job. Uh, I did. Uh, the, I mean, the operation, you, I mean that was that was part that was part of your job, yeah. Well, yeah, it's part of it, but it was it was not not the way you you're describing it. Or oh, I'm a speaker now. Oh, you're in there. I'm in. But oh, I lost. I think her. We should all go in there and bust. Up I lost their audio now. Son of a bitch. I can't. What? Well, where is it? I need the. It's, it's on, on Twitter. Twitter. Going to God watch, damn it! Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were going in. Oh, I thought we were going to monitor it from the show, but all right, I'll go in and and we'll yeah. bust up the room. Yeah, let's We've see what we can before. get in here. I can't. I don't. I can't find groups. It. But I personally never misinformed UFO groups. I never gave 
Bill Moore any information to give the UFO groups. We were just interested. So when you say penetrate, when, when you say penetrate UFO groups, how did you do that without, without sort of uh, giving people a false narrative as to who you were? I wasn't, I never penetrated a UFO group. I recruited people who were already in the UFO group, NICAP, APRO, MUFON, CAUSE. I can't get this you re, you re, again. Inter, you uh, recruit people within, oh, and then Whitmer they feed you information about what the groups are doing. That's what happened. Okay, got it. And just going back to Tyler, this is my last question. And, and like I said, hey, you know, if you're welcome to come on my show, Rick, I appreciate you being open with this like this, you know, and I'd love to grill you uh, just one on one, maybe one day. But uh, last question, going back to disclosure to, uh, tonight, um, you were on his show within the last, I'd say, six months. And so you know, I, I have a feeling you might remember this, maybe you don't, but there was uh, <laughs> there was some complaints from Thomas Fessler. Some folks were, were trolling him a little bit, I being one of them. And you had mentioned on his show um, that you were looking into the people that were poking holes in the Thomas Fessler doll as if he was a voodoo doll. And we were all sort of uh, picking on him with some of the things that he was saying and claiming and letting be said on his show. But I'm curious, what did you mean by that? Like, did, you were looking into uh, the people that were trolling him? Did you find anything? No, I was joking. <laughs> that was a joke. That was just uh, a good oh, humor really? joke. Uh, yeah, I go out there and I mean, you somebody. Could, no, you... it's just a joke. I mean, you could understand, though, like being in the position that you used to be in and the sort of the rumors that are wild and flying around about you, how a joke like that could be a little poor taste. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. Well, well, trolling people on a on a radio show is a little poor taste, too, which, Lou, you're good at, by the way. Oh, burn. Thanks, Ralph. I appreciate it, but you're a big fan. I love it. Thanks. Okay, Lou, we'll stick around. Um, I want to get to some other um, gorgeous uh, patient hands, um, like Jay Jest. How's it going? Hi, Milo. Um, hi, Ricky. All right, so we got a little bit of you insight know, of Lou of Buffet talking about disclosure tonight. How about that? A little bit of fun action, hey, Mike? Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, actually, it seemed to me like Lou Buffet was um, trying to be more civil than he usually is because it wasn't his platform or environment. So, um, yeah, he didn't uh, go off like he usually does. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. And what happened was when they gave me the microphone to go ahead and talk, it killed the audio in my window, so I had her go ahead and jump out of it, unfortunately. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, if I could say, um, I know I kind of brought this up briefly, but uh, before Lou could even get in, you have to be a listener and then a speaker. Before he, he could become yes. a speaker, there was a whole debate between everybody whether or not to let Lou in. They know the deal with Lou Buffet, too there and and then everybody said okay lou's going to agree to be civil which you could argue if he was or not but yeah uh, yeah there apparently you he's already hit the buffet <laughs> hey thomas I, yeah correct and i think he's jealous of luke man that's what i'm telling you i think he's jealous of luke. oh he's you better believe no he he's jealous of the buffet let's be honest <laughs> well you do do some good cooking i hear i can when i want to when I have to, but I'm better. Well, I can cook inside on the barbecue. Yes, I have a charbroiler in the kitchen, or I can cook on the stove. But some of my best work is done on the smoker outside in the backyard. And I'm proud of yes. that. Well, I'm sure Lou would be too. But uh, oh, it's a science. Not, it's a science. I'm sure you guys already knew about it, but I wanted to put that in the back chat. What was happening there? Yeah, you know, I I can do ribs, Evan B. But my smoked pork, my smoked pork shoulder is to die for. And I have too much in the freezer, which I need to start eating again, which is phenomenal. Not only is the smoked pork good on a nice toasted bun, some warm barbecue sauce and some sliced onions and chopped spicy pickles or, or coleslaw on top of it. That's good. But one of the best places you can have some smoked pork with barbecue oh, sauce is on top of a pizza. Believe it or not. You're welcome, Tia. <laughs> I cannot find it because I would have went off in there. 
Thank you, Thomas. Oh, I'll, 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 we'll send you here. I'll send you here. For anyone who wants to go ahead and listen in on the back chat, yeah, I'll put it in the back chat. There you go. There's a link right now if you want to go jump in that chat on Twitter. There you go, Tia. Go after him. Thank you. Thank you. And, so and for those who are in the away, chat everybody. who want to go ahead live. and go after the conversation and uh, give us some support for uh, Rick Doty. Does that do it? No, it doesn't do it. It's a filter I can do. Ah, oh, here we go. It's the hot bubble. There you go. I can. And say Rick is showing what a class act he is, isn't he? Rick was supposed to be here tonight. Rick, where are you, my friend? You're supposed to be here yesterday, but it's okay. Go on with the conversation with Rick Doty. Have a fun time. It's important. <laughs> on that note, what a great show. What a great opportunity. Did everybody have a good time tonight, I hope? Oh, it was fun, Thomas. For, a, for a having a dead day in UFO news, we've been able to pull an hour and 47 minutes out of our ass. I even took the opening intro, which people have been complaining about, and I shortened it down to just a fraction of the time that I have what I have to do. Right, Mike? I think it was an improvement, to be honest with you. Oh, it geez. worked out by showing names. Gee, thanks. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> no, the yeah. audience appreciates getting right to the content and, and instead of waiting for 30 minutes to get through who's ever. Oh, in the it chat. doesn't. It, it's, it's two minutes for the open. And you know what that open does? Is it actually gets my mind set for the show to where I can actually push away all the reality that's there. And by going through that whole script, of saying, you know, from the X Files, from science fiction, <laughs> all that stuff to the stuff you're seeing around the air. Yeah, that actually gets my mind ready for the show. So oh, I may I understand. It's I may a, not. Thomas and Mike, may I up for a second? If anybody Go right goes ahead. and asks, if anybody goes and asks Rick a question, and you want to represent disclosure tonight, don't do it. But be nice. Be civil. Be nice. Don't talk down to other people or anything else who would do Represent, that i know but i want you to uh, i think this is a classy show every it should be represented well that that's all i wanted to say hey oh, wait, a minute, to wait a minute, a minute. Wait, we're serious about not being serious here brian well i know <laughs> but i don't i, I you know if, you, if we're trying to grab they a lot the more same audience respect that they give if they're coming at him with that that nasty push energy i'm gonna come right back at them because we, rick doesn't deserve that oh but, hell no girl I, go or, after or it this show you know oh, i'm yeah. hot-headed um but i will not show nobody respect oh that is my being disrespectful don't. to this show or lou period do not piss off tia because it's otherwise we're gonna Go back to Party City where you belong. We're going to tell you where you belong. <laughs> Brian, if you were making that point to me, you know I have never gone full Sawan on anybody. Not here on Disclosure Tonight and not on Twitter. And you've been, you've joined me in both places. Hey, Mike. So, Mike, yeah. you've never heard me get angry before. Nobody has heard me get angry before. Because if I got angry... The neighbors across the street would fucking hear my voice. But the point, Thomas, is that we all can get angry. Oh, and I, I have an idea of how you can get angry, but not live on the air. No. You do, no. you do it in a smart way, Mike. It, it, th that's all I wanted to say. And I didn't mean to speak for your show, Thomas, but I don't want a yeah. bunch of people going out there making it a Maury Povich yeah. show. Kind of like but, no, Mike, gee, Mike, we already had agreed on Lee. Why did you bring him? You already told me what to do on the show. Why did you bring him on your spaces? Oh, bu 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 wait, wait. I know I had asked a hard question sometimes because if I have to deal with the price, so do you. Oh, as sorry. far as what? Oh, Which never what? mind. <laughs> Gotta have oh, fun listen. with it. And Susan Ford, you have your hand up. Thank you, my dear lady, for saving my ass. Was there a question that I missed? No, like not at all. Susan, go ahead, my dear lady. I know that uh, Mr. Uh, Lou Buffet watches this program, obviously he does. So I just want to, because he'll probably watch this this episode. And as he's going to, I just want to say, Lou, Keep your hands off my Rick Doty, or I'll go swan on your ass. Oh, there you go. You'll be a bad swan on his ass. How about that? 
<laughs> oh, the new account. Very good. Yeah. Good plug. Yeah, oh, you better believe it. The new Swan, whatever, some numbers coming after. Yeah, great show. How about that? On that note, I want to go ahead and thank everybody for coming out for a disclosure tonight. What a great show. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We made it for an hour and 51 minutes. You got to have a good time, my friends. On that note, I want to thank everybody who has been in the, who have uh, thrown out Super Chats tonight. That includes, oh no, I screwed up. D Wolf, Johnny Darko, unfortunately, it's all hearsay. Phase Will and TK. Apparently, D Wolf gave us the first Super Chat of tonight. If not, uh, did I screw up my Super Chats tonight? Oh, I have them all. DeWolf did give us the first Super Chat tonight. Thank you very much, everybody. We thank you for your love and support disclosure tonight. More importantly, it's not just the people who have given us Super Chats. It's also the people who have been in the chat tonight. And who would that be? Let me see if I can find it here somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. I know I can find it. Give me a second. Chrome window. Where did it go? There it is. I found it. Here we go. Who do we still have out there in the chat right now? Let's go ahead and thank everybody for coming out. That includes Anonymous Rex. Tim, call in sometime, my friend. Stay a minute and flutter up. Blake McCreary, Brendan England, Brian Morgan. Brooke Sharp has been here. Good to see you, Brooke. Chameleon UK, Christine Lynn. Distance Dark Eyes, Eric Groth and the Goose, Evan B, Firefly, JRD, JCat has been here and in the back. Maybe, maybe not. Kathy's been here. Kelly Bro with those piercing blue eyes. Kim and Ari has been in the chat and on the back. King Bull, Cosmos Galactic, Melissa Hogan, Mick Mick, Mr. Catfish 2100, OG Skywalk, Paul DeMond, Peggy with Crockett and Tubbs from the great state of Florida. Don't forget Steve. Gotta thank Faze Will from California. Rachel Osborne, Renee Cruz from the Philippines. Resonate. Rough Ready, Sergi Cardio, Sierra Multimedia from Hong Kong, Sun Saver from NHH, Syrup has been here along with a Mac Geek, Terrence Wills, Trent Algood, and also Yell Tommy Tanker, also known as Andy from Bristol, United Kingdom. This is the this is a worldwide phenomenon and a worldwide show. I don't think everybody coming out for tonight's show. It's been one heck of a broadcast, let me tell you. I appreciate that, but it's not just the people in the back. It's also the people in the chat. And who's been there with us tonight? Let's go ahead and thank Brian Pemble. Thanks for coming out tonight, Brian. Hey, absolutely. Boy, what a great show. Uh, A little bit of fireworks. Too. Just a bit, just a bit. Holy cow. I mean, gotta you think. tune in at a better time. <laughs> you better believe it. I got to thank Ms. Cussauer. Thanks for coming out tonight. You going to gonna read a Soriot Act tonight, my dear lady? No, I think I'll be nice tonight. Oh, there you go. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to thank Nick. Thanks for coming out, Nick. And for saying something earlier. You got a lot of great ideas, my friend. You're welcome, Taz. <laughs> Susan Ford, also known as Nunya Business. Thanks for coming out, my dear lady. My absolute pleasure. It was a great show. Oh, thank you. Also, from the great country of Sweden, Ali Alvian. Thanks for coming out tonight, Ali. Yeah, great show, uh, show, Thomas. And I really enjoyed this mixture of historical events and even recent events. And I think that helps uh, me to see even uh, recent events I miss. So it's good to have a, a, a summary. Absolutely. And, uh, Thank you, Rick yeah. Roberts. Thanks for coming in tonight, Rick. Great show. Appreciate it. I'm going to be in the back for uh, the after party. Thanks for coming in tonight, Shelly. Maybe not. Thanks for coming out tonight, Shelly. Appreciate you being here, my dear lady. All right, who else we have in the back? We've got Sonic Oman. Thanks for coming out tonight, Sonic. Thanks, Thomas. It was another awesome show. Uh, looking forward to the after chat. Oh, I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, let's see who else is there. Let's thank Tia Loreno. Thanks for coming in tonight, Tia. Tia, raise the hand. Tia, go ahead. 
Now she lowered it. Okay. And she put it down. But either way. Sorry about that. I was trying to answer your question. That's okay. Go ahead, my dear lady. Great show. Thank you very much. And is in his wise words from one of our friends. Can anybody tell me what can I do with these ladybugs? You got to tell us what to do with these ladybugs. And on that note, Mike, thanks for coming out tonight, my friend. Well, it was a fun show. Another oh, good I Tuesday know. Night. Somebody we... use Jennifer Goo and send me some bugs in the mail. It's fucked up. It is Can fucked somebody up. help? On that note, we all want to say eyes open, no fear, be safe, everyone. But go back to Party City where you belong. Absolutely. We love you, everybody. I'll come back now. Here. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon.